Hey there, my name is AJ Pickett and I make videos about role playing games and lots of them. I upload a couple of times a week with a live stream every weekend. You can find me on Subscribestar, Patreon and Discord, Facebook and Twitter. Also, there's an option to join the channel as a member and I welcome any questions you have in the comment section down below. As always, if you like this video or this channel, hit that like button and subscribe if you would be so kind. Morton Kanan's Fiendish Folio, published in 2019, tells us that Deep within the ethereal plane are the demi-planes, miniature worlds built by powerful archmages and other mighty entities to serve as personally designed private domains built for a specific purpose. Some are fortresses designed to keep wanderers from the material world away, others are far more sinister, dark realms where evil dreams take root and become ghastly realities. Such is the realm that spawned the Zill, horrific insectoid creatures created long ago to serve an ancient evil master. The master in question is thought to be a powerful wizard named Karaptus, whose machinations touch on many different worlds, including Greyhawk. It was there that he attempted to steal three potent magic items, but since then he has remained mainly a figure of myth and dark rumour, a legend who has been attributed with the creation of many dungeons, designed to keep his treasures safe and his twisted experiments privately locked away from the eyes of justice and morality. This is one of the wizards your mother warned you about. Karaptus long ago moved on from expensive and often raided dungeons to crafting his own magical demiplane to serve as his own domain in which he could do whatever he wanted. He turned his attention to perfecting his horrific experiments with living creatures and managed to take a species which naturally existed as parasites of the ethereal phase spiders and turned them into his own intelligent servitor race originally intended to sneak into the material plane using their ability to phase between the dimensional veil and snatch up well-guarded magical artifacts which he has indeed stockpiled within his realm. He later turned his efforts more towards capturing living victims which he turned into a population of slaves and worshippers. Little has been heard of Kyraptus and the only accounts of his realm are very unreliable, but there are feverish tales of a world filled with powerful artifacts, thought long lost, guarded by strange traps, logic defying puzzles and of course legions of both the merciless Zill and a legion of brainwashed thralls, many disfigured by profane experiments. It is telling that the Zills now rarely kidnapped commoners, instead they target young promising adventurers those whose natural talent and aptitude point to a bright future, but whose skills had not yet grown sharp enough to repel a dedicated assault. Azil will react in a particular way around those special individuals, particularly those with arcane talent, but more on that later in this video. Zil are a nasty species, now native to the many hidden demiplanes within the ethereal plane, well beyond the attention and control of their original master. They are raiders and hunters who make use of their ability to plane shift to ravish everything in their path. They usually appear as bright red monstrous beings standing four to five feet tall on two strong legs with two pairs of arms, a larger and a smaller pair. They have a hide that combines features of lizard and insect with bristles, antennae and scales over a frame which is almost humanoid in many ways. Their entire species is asexual, they reproduce by laying their deep green and golf ball sized eggs inside of a creature paralysed by their venom. They inject this venom with their claws as it oozes out of a number of special glands in their body. But producing the venom is a slow process, restricting the number of doses they can deliver to the victims to a maximum of 2 per 6 hours. According to the 5th edition monster listing, Azil makes 4 claw attacks each round, they are plus 6 to hit, have a reach of 5 feet attacking one target at a time and inflicting 1d4 plus 4 piercing damage with their wickedly sharp hooked claws. They normally do this either immediately after or before they use a bonus action to perform an ethereal jaunt where they magically shift from the material plane to the ethereal plane or vice versa. This movement can be blocked by use of an anti-magic aura, such as the effect projected by the large central eye of a beholder. If when attacking some victims they find a desirable candidate for abduction, they will release their poison into the piercing wound of a successful claw attack. The chosen creature must make a DC 11 constitution saving throw with a disadvantage if the Zill hit it more than once this turn taking 46 poison damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. If the poison damage reduces the target to zero hit points, the target is stable but poisoned for one hour, even after regaining hit points, 
and is paralyzed while poisoned this way. If the victim does manage to make their saving throw, this doesn't confer any subsequent immunity to the toxin, and if they are taken back to the ethereal realm by the Zill, they are now in some very serious trouble as they are attacked over and over again by swarms of the things until one of them takes a bite out of the victim and leaves something behind, a golf ball sized egg to inject deep into the victim's body. Zill borrow a lot of their physiology from an insectoid species, wasp-like, which prey on the phase spiders, and they still hunt down and capture a large number of the monsters, swarming over them, puncturing them with their claws, injecting toxin, taking them back to their strange hives and thrusting a retractable ovipositor tube out of their throat, deep into the body, leaving behind an egg. This process is quick, only taking two rounds, and in humanoids, the egg is injected into the stomach. The victim typically has its limbs severed and devoured by the swarm. It is blinded and bound in a fleshy webbing material and left to incubate the egg which hatches some time after. Now, you have some options here as the lore differs a fair bit in the original source material and there are no details about this for 5th edition at all, which avoids the whole subject of their reproduction like the plague. Actually, let's talk about that for a second. Removal of the reproductive details of the Zill in 5th edition is a form of censorship of artistic work that is deemed offensive or noxious. It's called expurgation, that type of censorship. The last time we saw such widespread and fundamental censorship of the existing lore of Dungeons & Dragons was back in 1989 with the publishing company TSR removing all references to devils and demons from the 2nd edition of AD&D, which is why they are often referred to as Bartizu or Tanari or simply called fiends rather than devils demons. Even to today I have to carefully navigate using the word demon in the titles or descriptive text of my videos because I can face a shadow ban on YouTube. The moral panic back in the 1980s actually had the end result of pulling D&D out of a hobby obscurity and saw sales rocket from 2.3 million to 8.7 million dollars thanks to what is known as the Streisand effect and what is now used by some gaming companies, looking at you White Wolf, as outrage marketing. Companies such as Wizards of the Coast engage in expurgation to remove problematic material from the game lore, but make no mistake, they're not doing this from a moral standpoint, they're doing it only so far as it is deemed to protect their sales margins, and let's not forget that when Wizards of the Coast first took over the franchise in 1997, the first thing they did was restore the words demon and devil in their new source books. Prominent writer Monty Cook was directed to bring demons and devils back by the president of Wizards of the Coast at the time, Peter Atkinson. History lesson aside, what I'm getting at here is that outrage over the contents of a work of fiction is nothing new to the hobby, and the actions that we're seeing Wizards of the Coast take are exactly what TSR did in response to their own era of moral panic. We are currently in another era of moral panic in regards to oversensitivity to issues of race, personal identity, and sexuality. The reproductive methods of the Zill getting axed from the current representation of them is a direct response to this new era of moral outrage, and it is just as as calculated and most likely just as temporary as removing the words devil and demon from the game. However you feel about the satanic panic now is exactly how people are going to feel about what is going on today in future decades. Mark my words. Thanks for your patience. I just needed to address that issue since the Zill are so clearly censored because of it. So let's talk about why the Zill are so disturbing, shall we? They are essentially driven by reproductive urges to locate victims which can survive as living hosts of their offspring. Logically, this is the strongest members of the humanoid races, which is the adventuring player characters. These adventurers are usually found with, near, or can be lured into a trap, baited with powerful magic items. Items which can be detected by the Zill and other creatures via the ethereal plane because the magical emanations also bleed into that realm. It's fairly deep lore that the reason many magical items can bypass the mundane protections of armor and such is because they exist in a sort of multi-dimensional state, and in old D&D articles it is assumed that some of the rare components that contribute to the extreme cost of magic item creation is due to these components being of extra planar origin. So a plus one sword has material from two planes, a plus three sword has material from four different planes, and so on. It's deep lore, but deeply interesting, and also deeply nerdy, which is why we're here after all. Zill are engineered to hunt magical artifacts by manipulation of that aspect of their reproductive biology, and disturbing as it is, 
When they are attacking the player characters, they are excited by more than just the prospect of chewing on some freshly severed limbs. Zill live for a maximum of 50 years, and in that time they only get two chances to implant their self-fertilized eggs into a host, so they are very motivated. I guess it becomes morally disturbing simply because these are not simple parasitic wasps paralyzing spiders and laying their eggs to hatch and eat the still living captive. These are intelligent sapient beings doing the same thing to other intelligent sapient beings. Well, it's supposed to be horrible. It's supposed to scare the crap out of the players when they realize what's in store for them if they lose the fight. But it's not a game ender necessarily. The characters are incapacitated, captured, implanted and secured in the ethereal plane, which means they can be rescued from a location full of powerful magic items that the Zill collect and store in their hive. And the numbers of individual Zill in the hive are not that high, since the reproduction action is actually very slow and quite difficult for them. I did mention you have a choice. I recommend for story arcs where a character is captured, a longer incubation and infestation time before hatching is going to give the players enough time to effect a rescue. So the victim has a total of 90 days before the Zill maggot bursts out of them, killing them in the process, and any time before then, casting a remove disease spell will kill the maggot, eliminating it from the body magically and save the character's life. The alternate reproductive timeline you can go with has the egg hatch inside the victim four days after implantation and it then chews an opening into the digestive system and begins to feed on what the host eats, which is why the Zill are omnivores. It is only in that first four days that the removed disease spell can get rid of them. After that, for the next seven days, the Zill maggot inflicts 1d10 plus 10 hit points of damage per day which in 5th edition should reduce their maximum hit points by that amount as well, as the maggot begins to chew its way through the guts of the host and during that time only a wish, regenerate or greater restoration spell can save them, after which time 2d8 young Zill emerge violently from the host, resulting in death, and these young will grow almost immediately to adult size over the next 1-4 to four hours. The 5th edition Zill have an armor class of 16 thanks to their high dexterity of 18 and natural armor. They have between 12 and 54 with an average of 33 hit points and a speed of 40 feet per round. They have a bonus to acrobatics and athletic skills representing their additional arms and great agility. They can speak the common tongue where in previous editions they either spoke infernal or only communicated with the each, each other and other beings via telepathy. Also, in earlier editions, they had a very high resistance to magic, so it's not unreasonable to beef them up with advantage on all saves versus magical effects. As for their society, Zill are much more complicated than people realize. While some are just barbaric predators who rely mainly on fang and claw, others are more civilized creatures that, who rely on brutal order. Their alignment has always been lawful evil, and they are still driven by the rigid order of the hive. Even though they have no queen, a gang of Zills is often led by a cleric. After all, keeping their implanted victims alive is a high priority for their species, as is the cleric's access to divination magics that enable them to better hunt down magic items, and the additional awareness of the clerics, thanks to their high wisdom score which helps them set the perfect ambush. Not all Zill look the same, nor do they have the same technological level. Zill are capable of carrying and using weapons in their four hands. Mainly this will be stabbing daggers or double-headed short spears, but some have access to demiplanes where temporal spells have seeded the place with future technology, so it's possible the Zill is going to have some sort of simple sidearm, or even something really advanced like a pistol-sized ray gun. Of course, this they will favour stun weapons to better incapacitate their victims. In the Pathfinder RPG, there is an example of a solo Zill bounty hunter named Quillock, and a strange subspecies of chaotic, green-scaled Zills inhabits the ruins of Valashai in the Valashmai jungle. These Zills, native to the material plane, take slaves to use as incubators. They prize arcane magic, and tribes are led by sorcerers or summoners with ties to the abyss. Please hit the like button if you made it this far, subscribe if you like what I do, check out my Subscribestar or Patreon for links for all the full scripts for these videos, buy some Teespring merchandise, we're your geek with pride, and as always, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more for you very soon.